Hey Darktable Mafia, in this video tutorial we're going to take a look at the color equalizer also known as the hue, saturation and brightness sliders or nodes in this case and we're going to use that to color adjust or color grade this image. I took this photo in Copenhagen in a bar in a hostel. It is quite noisy. The ISO is over 12,000, 12,800 exactly. However, the noisy image here will serve our purpose. We'll start with the hue section. And this hue color wheel is a little bit confusing since it goes diagonally. But to better explain this, the current color map of this image is this horizontal line with the nodes. So for example, this area right here, which has this cyan or greenish area, it's represented by this section right here. You can see this color map or the color is around cyan or greenish here. And then we have this reddish or brownish section here. So this is represented by these edges right here where it's like around reddish or orange. And you can see it on this color hue right here or this color map. So for example, if I want to change the hue of this section or this color, I can go back to this cyan area and then I can bring it down. And what it does is it brings it down to this area, which is yellow. So you can see it's yellow around this area. So this changes to this yellowish or greenish hue here. Same thing with this reddish section here. So if I go to this reddish section here, which is right here, I can, let's say, bring it down to this cyan or this bluish color and you can see the color has been changed and of course this is a 360 wheel so it, it should be like circular so that's why if i move this side the edge this side also changes so let me just reset this here another way of using or picking the color is by using the color picker tool here so i'll click on this and then you can see this icon here or this color picker icon and then i can move it around and while I move it around, you can see the horizontal, actually the vertical line being adjusted or moved or moved around depending on the hue. So you can see it's in the cyan section or greenish section here. I can go back to this reddish section and this vertical line has been changed. I can go to this blue area here and you can see the vertical line has been changed. So it's selecting this node area right here. So let me try to select this area again. I'll go to this very bright area right here. And you can see it's selected this area. The one thing is these nodes, I cannot select the middle or the in-between nodes. There's like no nodes there. So what I can do is let me just move this vertical line a little bit further away from a node. Let's say around here. So now it's in this section here. So I can't select a node there. So the way I can change that is by using the node placement. So if I move this slider, I can move the nodes around. So I can move it right there. And now I can change this exact hue. So I can bring it down here or I can bring it up, make it a little bit of this fuchsia or pinkish color, just like that. So that's how the hue section works. And what I can also do is change this transition of this curve. I can change it by changing this hue curve slider right here. And just like that, it changes the transition or selects the adjacent or nearby hue colors. Usually the default is pretty good, but you can see as I change the hue curve, this color changes or it introduces or remove some of the artifacting that you see due to the noise here. So let me just double click on this and reset it. I can double click on these nodes to reset it as well. Now I can do something similar with the saturation. So let's say I want to increase the saturation of this red section here. I can go to this color picker and let me go back to it. Actually it was already active. So let me go to this color picker and move it right here. And then you can see it's selecting this area. If I want, I can change the node placement just like that. And then I can increase the saturation. And you can see I overcooked it here. But you can see with the 
color map here in the background the saturation looks a little bit different then the hue and the brightness looks a little bit different as well i can change the brightness if i want just like that and of course it reintroduces artifacting or noise so let me just reset this here so now we have this use guided filter so this helps us reduce like artifacting so from my understanding it looks like the artifact definition in this case would be like noise or color noise that's what i think dark table means by that so for example if i go to this saturation actually i'll go to this i'll stick with this brightness section right here and i will go to the color picker here and i'll select this color right here i'll move the node placement to about that and then i'll increase the brightness just like that and you can see there's a lot more artifacting here or a lot more the noise is increased due to increasing the brightness so if i uncheck this use guided filter you can see there's more artifacts be introduced to this image but what i can also try doing is increasing the saturation of the red and then i'll go back to the brightness increase the brightness and just like that you can see a lot of the noise so if i check this option again use guided filter it should subtly reduce the noticeable artifact you can still see it just due to this high iso here so what i can do is use these sliders to fine tune the hue saturation and so forth just to select the adjacent colors based on hue and saturation to fine tune the artifacting or to reduce the artifacting but in this case the best option if i move the hue not too much happens it's very subtle increasing the threshold of the saturation not too much happens but if i change the effective radius that usually reduces the artifacting so you can see the artifacting has been reduced significantly so with this image i did go overboard to demonstrate the hue saturation and brightness mainly the brightness and the use guided filter most of the time you're not going to be adjusting this use guided filter unless you have a very noisy image or if you want to like select different type of very accurate or very precise colors let's say you have an apple beside an orange that's also beside a lemon then you can use these guided filters to help reduce artifacting and in addition use this go back to this hue slider in addition use this hue analyst rate sorry this hue curve to adjust the adjacent hues or to better choose the colors with better precision so let me just reset this here we also have this white level so this white level limits the white level or the brightness if you go over a certain brightness level so it's just to avoid clipping it is very difficult to demonstrate the white level so most of the time and according to dark table just keeping the white level at the default value is fine if you want to double check yourself you'll need to use a overblown landscape image with a sunset or sunrise or something like that and then you can play with these sliders while adjusting the brightness I checked it myself and like it's very hard to notice so that's why i'm not going to show you guys in this video tutorial so you may want to try it yourself but as dark table said the default value of keeping this white level at one to limit the clipping is pretty good so just keep it at that most of the time you're not going to need to change it let's see what else we can do here so just to fine tune this image or to fine tune and understand this color equalizer a little bit better I'll go to this image right here. I took this on Klein Island in the Curacao. I'm just going to right click here and drag this slider just to somewhat level or correct the horizon. It's not a perfect horizon as you can see because this is a circular island. But now I can start adjusting these colors. So I want to increase the saturation of this. So I'll go to saturation here and i'll go to this reddish or pinkish section here and i will increase the saturation just like that i'll probably increase it a little bit more same thing with this yellow and green here in this section i can increase it like that and then i can increase it like that 
and maybe even a little bit more just like that so let's see the before and after now with the sky i can go to this hue section and then i can use this color picker i can go right here and now you can see the node should be right here so i'll move the node placement and now if i want to subtly change the hue i can put this red color with this cyan complement here just to color map or color grade this image a little bit better so let's see the before and after so that's pretty much how the color equalizer works most of the time you don't need to use these sliders here unless you're doing some really precision fine tuning you can also fine tune the hsb using some of these masking tools here but hopefully now you guys understand how these horizontal or these diagonal lines work here with the hue nodes and then the saturation and the brightness nodes are pretty easy to understand and if you guys enjoyed this video you know what to do and as always live easy sleep breezy and stay lovely